<laughs> Welcome to my super spoopy Halloween lair. It's spoopy because it's orange. Today, you're going to be getting a real treat. Today, we're remembering one of the Halloween artifacts of my childhood and something I truly thought was a fever dream I had because nobody else seems to remember it. And I used to literally eat all of my Halloween candy in one night, so sugar-induced fever dreams aren't really out of the equation for me. Regardless, I'm referring to the scary godmother movies. Let's talk about it. Are forms going to be Pokemon's newest recurring gimmick? Spider-Man is now officially out of the MCU. Should Crash Bash get a remaster? Do you remember Splashdown Rides Gone Wild? So what do gamers really want from the next console generation? Invader Zim enter the Florpus. When in the world is GTA 6 going to drop? Let's talk about it. What's going on guys, Jeremy Bandicoot here, back with a Halloween Spooktacular! Today, we're diving into a movie franchise that I honestly don't think anyone else on this planet but me has ever seen. We're talking about the Scary Godmother movies today, just because I wanted to do something a little different for Halloween. Now, I racked my brain relentlessly to think of a piece of Halloween media that was near and dear to my heart during my childhood, and I finally landed on this franchise after thinking of literally every other single Halloween movie I had ever seen. Honestly, the only reason I remember these movies is because for some reason, I adored them when I was a kid, and that honestly kind of embarrasses me. It's not the fact that these movies are bad, far from it. It's just the notion that the main character of these films are a little girl finding their Halloween-y fairy godmother, affectionately dubbed Scary Godmother. And everyone gets together for a Halloween party and has a grand old time. Sure, hijinks ensue, but that's pretty much the rundown of the entire story. I feel as if the art style was the thing that drew me into the franchise in the first place, as it truly is a one-of-a-kind style, even to this day. It reminds me of the animation used in Monster House, but with more fluidity and cohesive animation. The reason they did the animation this way was to keep the integrity of the books, as the books used watercolor to portray the story, which is a really neat touch, and it's amazing that the studio went as far as the animation style with regard to keeping the integrity of the property, so props to you guys, that's awesome. I think the other big thing that enthralled me about this series was not only the existence and embodiment of monsters, but their portrayal as misunderstood and just living their day-to-day -day lives like any human would. Everything from vampires to skeletons to werewolves to black cats are present, and in this franchise, monsters exist in a place called the Fright Side, which is a place that is powered by Halloween spirit. It's basically another dimension where it's Halloween literally all the time, and Scary Godmother brings the main character there in efforts to show her what Halloween is all about during Scary Godmother's big Halloween party. The characters in these films take traditional Halloween monsters and give them each enthralling personalities, my personal favorite being Scully Pettibone, an extremely theatrical and flamboyant skeleton who has a real eye for show business. Despite Scully being my personal favorite, I don't have any gripes with any other characters in the film. They're all entertaining, have their own unique personalities, and make the journey through the film fun. Sure, there's not a ton of character development in the side of characters in these films, but it's a freaking Halloween movie aimed toward kids. You can't expect every character to be fully fleshed out. There's a decent amount of character development present, however, namely in the main character, Hannah, which is great to see, you know, it's, it's you know, character development, so that's great to see. They didn't have to put character development, so let's just be grateful for what we got. <laughs> These movies are honestly a lot better than they had any right to be. It tells a story from the perspective of a frightened little girl on Halloween night who gets shown that Halloween isn't scary at all and is actually incredibly fun. 
The ghouls, goblins, and monsters aren't out to hurt you, they're meant for you to have fun and enjoy the holiday. This is ultimately the lesson that Hannah learns, and oh my god is it an awesome lesson for kids to learn! It's because of these fantastic characters in the story that helped ease her into the Halloween spirit and realize that Halloween is a fun holiday, not a scary holiday. Dude, this is awesome! Two movies were actually made, if you can believe it, and both did a great job at entertaining again. Oh, fuck, cut, redo. Two movies were actually made, if you can believe it, and both did a great job at entertaining. Again, the story isn't the most solid in the world, and the characters aren't the most fleshed out, but it's an entertaining kids movie centered around Halloween with a great message behind it. I wouldn't mind seeing these movies back on there today, as they last aired on Cartoon Network in America over a decade ago. The only thing that I can even think of that they could have possibly done differently was to just make them a little bit more memorable. I'm racking my brain thinking about if there is anything else of note that came from these movies, but I just can't. I mean, this video is only going to be six minutes long and I've already drained the well dry. I mean, great story, fun characters, a fun ride, nice art. That's really about it. I mean, it's not a bad movie. It's just not very memorable, which sucks. I mean, regardless of, of all of that, both movies were a fun time, and I wouldn't mind making them a Halloween tradition of mine around the house. In fact, I'm gonna go find a copy, uh, but before I do, seeing as how we're still on time, I'm checking my watch, we're still good on time, I'm gonna tell you a personal story of mine that correlates with this film, and it's kind of too short for a story time video, so here we go. So in the beginning of the first movie, we meet these kids, Jimmy the Asshole, Bert the Car, Daryl the Candy, and Katie the Cat, who I had an unnatural attraction to when I was 8 years old, which was really fucked up considering she has pinholes for eyes. Anyway, moving on, turns out Jimmy is Hannah's older cousin, and being the asshole that he is, locks her in a creepy ass house where she first meets Scary Godmother. Meanwhile, the doofus kids are still out there, bored out of their skulls, waiting for Hannah to come running out of the house, scared out of her mind. For years, there was a line in this part of the movie that I could never understand. Listen. Door is a jar. Door is a jar. Door is a jar. Did you hear it? What did you think he said? It took me a solid six years. I was 14 years old when I realized this, but I never knew what this dude meant by door is ajar. I thought he was fucking nuts. I kept thinking, what the hell, dude? Your door is not ajar. It is not glass. It cannot hold things. You cannot carry it. It cannot be used to preserve your leftovers. You can't catch flyer flies. Flyer flies. Fireflies in it. What the fuck you mean the door is ajar? Then at 14, I learned what the word ajar meant, and to this day, that is one of my most embarrassing stories. You're welcome. If you happen to watch these movies like I did in your youth, what did you think about them? If you haven't seen them, do they at least seem interesting to you? Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, it really does mean the world to me. If you like what you saw here, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and while you're down there, hit that like button as well as the notification bell to stay updated with all my videos. Thanks guys, and as always, I'll see you next time.